Okay, so I know that I said that Up was going to be the next rated R Pixar, but I'm around fish just all day. So, Finding Nemo just came naturally. So, here we go. Rated R Pixar, Finding Nemo. <laughs> Jay, here is the tale of a father. Shortly after moving into their family home, his wife and children are tragically murdered by a cannibalistic serial killer. Although his wife died defending the children, her efforts were not in vain as a single handicapped child survived the onslaught. Ten years later, the once adventurous and carefree father has become entirely imprisoned by the traumatic events of that evening. Living in a persistent nightmare of fear, the man grows overbearing of his one remaining son, reeling in his sense of adventure to the point of rebellion. On a school field trip, the son and his friends are up at the edge of town, unknowingly at the very location of his mother and sibling's murder. After overhearing the location of the field trip, the father races to the scene to retrieve his son from what he sees as a dangerous place. Embarrassed and beyond frustrated with his father's overly protective nature, he openly rebels in front of his friends, taking off beyond a no trespassing sign. His son spins to return, overconfidently feeling he has made his point that his dad needs to trust him a little and let him live. When out of where the boy was kidnapped, dragged into a van that immediately races off. Father, adrenaline pouring through his veins, takes off at a sprint after the van, fighting for as long and as hard as his body will allow. Before he finally admits defeat, he can barely see the kidnapper skid around a corner and completely gone from sight. Frantically making his way through a crowd, the father pleads from person to person, asking if anyone has spotted which direction the van took. Spinning, he runs straight into a strange woman who oddly lights up at the collision. The man pathetically asks, one last time, Did you happen to see a van? I saw a van! I'm really not that sure that Dory is all that dark. The man, out of options, ignores his better judgment and allows himself to trust the direction of what can only be described as a mentally unstable word of direction. The two carry on, swiftly moving into a lowly part of town. Again, like so often in the father's life, he is enveloped by fear. Turning a corner, they run into a great monster of a man who fixes his eyes on the pair immediately. The father feels his heart sink as the man closes in on the two, his mass forcing the duo to change direction, guiding them into a dark, abandoned subway. The room is dark, nearly empty, just a small, unusual gathering of people quietly standing, awaiting the bear of a man. In a shocking turn, an informal meeting breaks out. We find out the group is comprised of reformed criminals, working to slowly right their lives. However, a misplaced comment causes the huge man that guided the two in to lose his temper and come at the throats of the father and the strange woman. The two take off the door and narrowly escape. Sorry, it's spelled exactly like the word escape. Narrowly escape the encounter. Meanwhile, the boy, awaking from sedation, finds himself in a prison where he is not alone. He slowly arises to see a strange assortment of other prisoners. The boy quickly learns that most of the other prisoners were abducted much younger than himself and have very few memories of their previous life. The prisoners also explain that they are merely objects of their captor's obsession, that no real harm is intended, but no one has ever escaped. Damn it! Escaped. They soon learn that the son has been promised as a gift to another overseer, known for a violent history with their captives. Back to our heroes. Having put distance between themselves and the reformed criminals, the two wandering in the direction of the van run into a group of school children. Disregarding the children's age, the woman explains the situation, and we find out the kids are traveling in such a large group because they live in fear of the described captor. They've heard rumors of his lair and direct the pair to a far part of the city, explaining they'll need to take the subway to get there. Eager to get to the subway, the father leads the pair through treacherous parts of the city, ignoring the woman's advice to travel through an abandoned building Building, the man argues to take the alleys surrounding the subway station. The alley appears clear at first, but quickly find out they've disrupted one huge, angry, horrible nest of bees. <laughs> I think you just need to work with me on this one. They begin to race their way through the alley. The man, wearing a heavy coat, is unaffected by bee stings. The woman, however, comes out the other side, barely able to stand. The man helps her down as she slips out of consciousness. Back in the prison, the arrival of the young boy has sparked interest in attempting an escape plan. It requires the child to work his way into the ventilation of the chamber that serves as a prison and bypass a huge spinning fan that provides climate control to the prisoners. Though incredibly dangerous, if he is able to get through, he could easily release his new friends. 
The boy agrees to try. The father was able to drag his companion onto the subway where we find them waking up from the sheer exhaustion of the day. Groggy, the two slowly come to, where they have been the focus of attention to the other train patrons. With nothing else they could be doing to expedite their progress, the two decide to tell the tale of the journey to that point. Mesmerized by the story, another passenger on the train offers to make a phone call to a friend that could give them a lift the remainder of the way upon exiting the train. The only problem is, they'll need to exit the train while it's still moving. Fast approaching a bridge intersection where they can catch their final ride that will take them right to the kidnapper's lair, the pair grip the train railing and prepare to rip it, tear it, and punch it into the vortex below. This is starting to feel a little less rated R-ish. Crashing onto the ground, after dramatically exiting the train, the two reach the intersection where they're supposed to meet the driver that will take them the rest of the way. The woman, staring into blankness, starts calling for help. Seems like as good a time as any to start speaking whale. Hello! We are trying to find his son. Nailed it. A huge garbage truck comes screeching around the corner. The driver pulls up and explains he can take them to the kidnappers, but in order to get close, they will have to ride in the back. Meanwhile, back in the prison, the boy and the other inmates have managed to find a way to lift the small statured captive into the ventilation. He carefully maneuvers the tight space until he meets the spinning blade drawing air into the enclosure. One timing mistake, and it'll have all been for nothing. One swift movement and he was miraculously through. The boy dropped out of the vent on the other side of the prison, quickly moving to free the other captives, when the second overseer caught the boy and quickly and maliciously went after him. The boy had no choice but to run, finding a grated opening, a trash chute, pulling it open and dropping into a rancid, rusted, long, winding tube, barreling his way along until he crashed into a dumpster. Both son and father hear and feel a rumble as the garbage truck lifts the dumpster, and as fate would have it, drop the boy back with his father. So there you go, that is the latest installment of the Rated R Pixar series. I promise up next will actually be up. For my question of the day, what did you guys think? Are you enjoying the series? Do you like the little interjections that are kind of a comic relief to the otherwise supposed dark story? Leave your thoughts or comments or recommendations or anything you have for me in the towel section down below. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Rafe Coates from Washington who sent us a magnificent ally to the Grizzly Eagle Shark Army in the fight against the Giraffe Lens. Sent us a wonderful silverback wolf spider drawing. So so, Rafe, thank you so much, and we appreciate you watching our channel. Also, if you watched our Tuesday video this week, we unboxed the latest Loot Crate. We are also doing a contest to give away our spare box. Jay and I have both posted pictures to our Instagrams that have a picture of two of our favorite items from the box. All you have to do is follow us and like both of those pictures to be entered, and I believe Jonathan is going to announce the winner in his Tuesday video. So if you'd like to do that as well, we would very much appreciate it. But Jay, that is everything that I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.